Welcome. And uh, as usual, we're going over the business model canvas and its components. Today, we're going to be taking a look at number eight, the key partners block of the business model canvas. So what is this part? Uh, again, remember on one, sorry, on one side of the business canvas model, we had the front of the stage, the part of the business model that everyone sees, your customers see and so on. And then in this, we have the background behind the stage, what's going on, which everybody doesn't necessarily see. So we talked about the key activities, things that need to get done to make this a success, the key resources, what do you need to have? And again, these are don't include all of them, but the important, difficult, expensive ones can be considered keys. And now let's talk about key partners, okay? So uh, what do we mean by the key partners? And again, if we remember, we've seen quite a few companies that have added innovations into their business model canvas. And today we're way at the left-hand side and we are looking at the key partners. So which, uh, for which of our activities or for which resources are we going to need help? OK, as a startup, especially, you are probably not going to have enough resources to do all of the key activities totally in-house. Similarly, all of the key resources that you may need that we talked about in the previous weeks may are not things that you may be able to finance with your limited resources. Or even if you have resources, like we will see in some of the examples, you may choose not to use those resources because either they can be done better or more cheaply by, uh, by others. So key partners, uh, what, what are the partners or suppliers that leverage your model, help you make an improvement in your model? Who do you need to rely on? So what type of people or what type of companies could these key partners be? Okay, so these are parties that help you, one, either obtain one of the key resources that we had been discussing earlier, or perform some of the key activities that, again, have been discussed. So, again, if these are so important, why aren't they done in-house? Well, sometimes that's not possible, or sometimes it's not advantageous. So, you may resort to using key partners. And again, uh, a party isn't a key partner just because you work together with them. They're key if they make a difference, if they're important, if they reduce the cost, if they improve the quality significantly as opposed to, or simply make it possible for you to do this. Some things you might not be able to do totally on your own. So the, the key resources, and the key activities that you would not be able to do without them and that are important are valuable. And again, key partners typically aren't, you know, people that you can find a hundred of easily. These are special individuals or special organizations which somehow you have a connection with and are uh, doing business with. So um, what kind of important things and again only the important or difficult ones are included okay so uh the most typical example of a key partner that we like to use is let's say that production is going to be one of your key activities and in order to do this undertake this production let's say that you need a special piece of machinery a key resource and this key resource is, is, is a machine which is very expensive. It costs $10 million and is not available uh, from others. Let's say that we are in Ankara and let's say that in Ankara, there's only one or maybe two of these machines and you know they cost $10 million. So buying the third one for Ankara is beyond the means of your startup. What are you going to do? Are you going to give up? Well, potentially, if you go to one of the people that have this machine, okay, maybe they're not doing a uh, constant business for other people, but maybe they're not using that machine to full capacity. Maybe they have, you know, some, uh, some time which they might be able to have you use it during that period. Well, in that case, uh, entering into a contract or into an agreement or signing a contract with them to basically uh, allow you to use that machine, yes, 
would make them a key partner, especially if they offer special terms, good terms, uh, then definitely I would include them as a key partner. Or uh, maybe it's not production, maybe, maybe it's on the selling side. So let's say your product is something which needs to be sold in supermarkets, or that is the business model that you're going to use. Well, as long as I you know, finish, I design and produce my product, it should be easy to get it onto the shelves of the supermarket, right? Not necessarily so. It can be quite difficult and quite expensive to get onto the shelves of a supermarket, especially if it's a national chain or even international chain. Um, but let's say your product is so interesting that one of those chains says, well, if you produce that, I will put those into onto my shelves, okay? And maybe not even ask for, you know, any additional money or your share of the uh, payment for the advertising and so on, because typically these can be very expensive because they have limited shelf space and it is at a premium. And not, by the way, all shelves are not equal. I level and the uh, heads of the aisles are much more valuable. Things that you put there typically sell much more than things that you put at the foot level or above eye level or in the middle of the aisles and so on. These are not the valuable real estate. You want the places which will help you sell. And if you have something special and the supermarket chain agrees and says, yes, I will put those on my shelves, and I will, you know, not ask for, you know, a very high amount of money, then yeah, they could be a key partner for you. What else? Well, let me try to give you some examples, okay? So I've added some onto here, and let me uh, talk about some of these. For example, a lot of people will kind of wonder why Togi is here. Well, Togi is uh, here, you know, Turkey Noto uh, Automobile Gilesim Grubo, because uh, they are trying to do something interesting, okay? So produce Turkey's first electric vehicle, you know, and uh, sell it at a good price and make money and develop a Turkish brand. Good. Uh, but they're going to, or they're outsourcing almost all of it. The design was outsourced. The, uh, the uh, engines, you know, the batteries, uh, you know, maybe are we just going to be putting them together? So that's a lot of outsourcing. But yes, the, if you work with good key partners, for example, for the, the design, I think they went to Pinafore. And uh, for the electric battery, where I guess they were using... Uh, working with some others, and uh, I think um, Vestel is also in there. So it, it, it should be interesting. It should be interesting. But I'm not sure that it's really a business if you outsource everything. So the, the, this actually might be a little too far. Um, Apple is an interesting example. Uh, who are Apple's key partners? Well, Apple is one of the you know, most valuable companies in the world. And, you know, they have this brand and they have these products, which are thought to be a very high quality. So production is very important, right? Well, Apple maybe doesn't think so, or it doesn't do its production in-house, for example, for its iPhones. It doesn't have its own factory. It actually outsources the production to others, people that have, you know, high technology factories in China, which produce their iPhones for them. They have high level of security, then, you know, there's a lot of other things in there. But despite having huge amounts of money, which they could invest to build a factory for themselves, they choose not to. Why not? I'm not sure. Maybe it's because this way it can be done much more cheaply or they don't need to invest in all of the hardware, all of the machinery and equipment, uh, which maybe the iPhone might not use all of its capacity. Uh, the owner of those factories, in the time it doesn't produce iPhones, it probably can you know, switch to making other things there or maybe other phones as well. As well. So uh, Apple for its iPhone productions, uses key partners, okay? So it doesn't just accept anyone off the street and say, okay, produce this for me, but they choose certain, you know, companies with high technology and good know-how, and they have them produce their phones for them. And they focus themselves on design, on software, and on advertising and sales, 
where they do have an advantage, whereas in the other one, no advantage, maybe even a disadvantage. What else do we have here? Alibaba is on here because Alibaba is interesting in that it took, uh, it was very difficult to communicate or and or do business with Chinese companies. Alibaba made it such that, you know, just about anyone can do business with these Chinese producers and so on and easily order and pay for uh, and leave feedback for these uh, companies. So it's a company which has allowed a lot of uh, producers and sellers to come together to be able to do business uh, despite all the difficulties that there used to be of doing business with you know, Chinese producers, Chinese factories. Nespresso is an interesting example in that it's not in its current state, but in its initial business model, it worked with a key partner and this failed and then they changed. It. So uh, they were initially planning on selling their Nespresso machines to businesses. So it was going to be a B2B business. Uh, and rather than go to all of their customers, all of the businesses to sell to them, they actually entered into an agreement with another company, which was already providing uh, a lot of things to these businesses, like you know, paper, like printers, like scanners, and, and so on. So they had a sales force, which was already visiting these potential customers. And they thought, good, while they're there, they can sell my products as well. The problem turned out to be that these guys were interested in selling, you know, products by the pellets, by, you know, big, in large, very large amounts. And the Nespresso machines and the refills, you know, remember these pods that are used in them, uh, turned out that they weren't making enough money to make it uh, meaningful for them to really go after the customers for these. So in its initial business model, the Nespresso machines had failed. And what ended up being successful was they changed their business model from B2B, trying to sell to, you know, uh, large companies and, you know, to businesses. They said, let's target households. And uh, so the difference was that uh, the, to target households, they could, you couldn't go door to door to households. But what you could do is you needed advertising and uh, you needed a brand image and all this. That's when they signed a contract with George Clooney for their advertising and came up with a campaign and the Nespresso stores and so on. And it turned out to be quite successful. But uh, so their key partners in that case, in the original one were the, the company with the sales force visiting their potential customers, but it didn't work out that way. The final one up here, aviation or aviation, right? American gin, okay? I'm not sure if you've heard of this company, but when I start giving a little more details about it, you'll probably notice you have heard about it. So what does it do? Or before getting to that, let me talk about this little picture in the corner here. What is that? Well, it shows you the seats of the car in the vehicles. Well, the interesting thing is that, excuse me, Interesting thing is that uh, today, US automakers, none of them make their own seats anymore. So don't they have seats in US cars? They do, but all of them are outsourced. So again, uh, why? Because it's much cheaper and they can get the same quality and the same design that they want, but they, having them produced outside. So that's another example of using key partners in your business model. But coming back to this aviation American gin, if you have heard about it, you know, you've probably uh, heard about it through, you know, Ryan Reynolds. Why? Well, aviation was a company which was begun in the early 2000s and then bought by another company. But in 2018, a minority stake in it was bought, was purchased by the movie star Ryan Reynolds. Um, and from that point on, Ryan Reynolds truly became a key partner for Aviation American Gin because it was originally a not very well-known small uh, liquor company making gin. Uh, but once he became part of it, 
what he brought into the company and being an owner of this company was he had a lot of followers, a lot of fans, and as a result, a very large voice. And he used that voice and together with his charm and with his, uh, I guess, quirky humor. Uh, and, you know, many, many people started to notice that, oh, there was this brand of gin. And, you know, with the advertisements and all the other things, it became quite popular. And uh, what is it from 2018? So a little over two years later, uh, the company had become quite a bit more successful and it was bought for $610 million by the British uh, spirits company Diageo uh, or Diageo. I'm not sure how we pronounce it. But, you know, the, the reason he, uh, this is included in our key partners is, uh, you know, one of the important things that need to be done is getting the customers, right? So at sales, advertising is very important. And, you know, a lot of companies spend a lot of money on advertising, but sometimes one key partnership with, you know, one individual or one company can uh, really make a huge difference and can allow these companies to develop into much bigger companies. And in this case, it was the advertising part of the key activities, which Ryan Reynolds was able to jump in and greatly increase the you know, awareness about this company. And as a result, make it into a very successful business. Okay, so those are the key partners, uh, key partnership part of the business model. And I hope you apply to your own business idea. And I'm interested to hear about who or what type of key partners, partnerships your company needs to have to make it a success. Thank you for listening.